A man will learn his fate today for a double murder in Spokane Valley. It happened in the early morning hours of 2016. We will tell you what is expected today in court. Rain is back in the forecast for our Friday morning. I'll let you know how long it'll last and when temperatures will start cooling down. The devastation that Hurricane Dorian left in the Bahamas brings up the question, should there be more severe hurricanes than Category 5? We're connecting the dots. The Spokane County Interstate Fair opens today. Get your phones out and ready to vote. We want to know what is your favorite thing about the fair. A look back in time. The pavilion has been an icon here for decades. And today we're taking a look at what it was like 30 years ago. Five a.m. now on our Friday morning. Thanks so much for starting your morning with Up with Krim. Great to have you with us as we round out the work week. I'm Jen York. I'm Evan Narani, and I'm Dana Marie McNichol. Well, hey, Evan, you were talking about changes in the forecast yeah. <laughs> all week long. Today, the rain has finally arrived. That's right. The changes have arrived. So we're starting no. off the morning with plenty of rain. I guess uh, in some cases, I I'm kind of okay with the rain because I think we have. It's been so long since we've seen a nice downpour, and mm -hmm. it's starting to be the fall season. So. We got to get used to it, right? All right, we'll kick off the right. morning rush with what we can expect today. So what we got on satellite radar right now is plenty of rain really across the region from the eastern slopes of the Cascades through North Idaho and Western Montana. If you're in the Spokane area and you haven't seen it yet, well, wait a couple minutes and you'll probably see it uh, right around you. Here's a little bit of a closer look and you can see just pushing about halfway through Spokane County. That means residents up on the South Hill have probably already started to see that rain come down. Otherwise, as it moves farther north, we'll definitely see a larger impact around Spokane. County as it continues to move uh, north from here. Kootenai County, same situation, really starting to pick up around uh, the Coeur d'Alene area and moving up towards Sandpoint. So if you're in those northern uh, northern areas, expect about another hour, maybe two, before you start to see that rain really pick up. Now, what we see on the 12 hour forecast shows that the afternoon is not going to be nearly as warm as we've seen the previous afternoons. We've been used to the upper 70s and 80s. Uh, yesterday, we almost made it to 90 degrees. Today, not even close. An afternoon high of 71 is what we're expecting in Spokane. Rain continues all the way through about noon, maybe 2 p.m. before we start to see uh, those clouds and showers then clear up. Now, we're also still keeping an eye on Hurricane Dorian, now a Category 1 storm pushing northeast at 14 miles an hour. It's making its final impact on the North Carolina coast before it pushes off and we say goodbye to Dorian. It is expected that the National Weather Service will retire the name Dorian as we've definitely seen enough of it uh, over the last several weeks or so. So sustained winds of 90 miles per hour as it clears off and leaves the region. Jen. Evan, thank you. About 300,000 homes are without power this morning in North and South Carolina as a result of Dorian. Dorian, of course, is lashing some of North Carolina's outer banks with strong wind. That area is also seeing heavy rain and a dangerous storm surge. Taking a live look at the East Coast this morning, you can see Dorian is far from over. Heavy wind, boy, it just looks very stormy out there on the East Coast. Authorities have warned all coastal residents to evacuate. Further north, leaders in Virginia have also issued evacuation notices. Experts say hurricane watches are in effect this weekend for areas as far north as Canada. Well, Dorian also caused damage further inland. Experts say it spawned about 15 tornadoes yesterday along the East Coast. One even wiped out an RV park in North Carolina. And cleanup is underway this morning in Florida and Georgia. That area escaped a direct hit but still saw extreme weather conditions. Dorian caused power outages and some flooding. Meanwhile, a massive rescue and relief effort is underway in the Bahamas, where there is widespread devastation. The hurricane decimated parts of the Bahamas for 48 hours, killing at least 30 people. Authorities say that number is expected to rise dramatically. At this point in time, we're getting, we're going past chaos at this point. It is no forward to say better, it's getting worse. So we need any help we can get. Experts say cleanup in the Bahamas is expected to top $7 billion. Moving here locally, the group that got Medicaid expansion on the Idaho ballot last year is working on another initiative. Reclaim Idaho members want to raise money for public schools by increasing taxes on corporations and the wealthy. 
Supporters say the increase will generate $170 million for K-12 public schools. It would also reduce the need for school levies. If approved, the group will need to get 55,000 voter signatures to get it on the 2020 ballot. A new chauffeur service is coming to Spokane. Guardian Transportation has been around for about one year. It started in Sandpoint. It gives service members a chance to use their skills to benefit the community. But it's not your typical Uber or Lyft. The services include roadside assistance, personal security, service to and from the airport, or even just to downtown on the weekends. It's all done by drivers who have military or security experience. It will be open for rides next week. The company does not have an app. Instead, all of its services are listed on its website. Idaho drivers were ranked the seventh worst in the country. That's according to a 2018 national report. This ranking is based off wrecks, speeding tickets, DUIs, and citations. Hayden made the top five worst cities to drive in, but Moscow and Lewiston were in the top five best cities. The long awaited day is finally here. The historic Riverfront Park U.S. Pavilion is opening today. The grand reopening festivities start today at 4 p.m. and continue through tomorrow. The celebration will include fun for the entire family. The biggest part of the reopening will be the light show from the new illumination blades on top of the pavilion's net structure. The light show begins tonight at 8 p.m. Well, that is your morning rush. Stories making headlines in the inland northwest and around the nation. You can let us know what's happening in your neighborhood by using the hashtag UpWithCrem. 506 now. The annual Spokane County Interstate Fair kicks off today. It runs for about a week and a half. At 506 now, we want to check in with Creme 2's Dana Marie McNichol, who's in the newsroom with more. Good morning, Jen. I am so excited about the newsroom. I'm the newsroom. <laughs> Spokane County Fair, it's 5 a.m. As you can see, kickoff to summertime adventures begins with the Spokane County Interstate Fair. And don't worry, you have plenty of time to go. The fair starts today and goes until the 15th. Before we get into details about the fair, I want you to take out your phone and vote with us in our live poll. What's your favorite thing about the fair? The rides, fried food, prizes, or the animals? We'd love to know what you think. The fair is taking place at the Fair and Expo Center in Spokane Valley. The theme of this year is a fun one. It's Pirates of the Carrots and Beans. Parking is $5 a day. And when it comes to buying tickets, you can purchase your tickets in advance on TicketWest.com or at the fair. Tickets range from daily admission to tickets for events happening at the grandstand. Fun fair events include a rodeo and a number of concerts, including Trace Atkins and Foreigner. There will also be a tractor pull and demolition derby, in addition to all of the booths, rides, and wonderful, wonderful fried food. Whether you are a fan of the fair or rides or games, make sure to make it out to the Spokane County Fair for some fun. It's the whole family will have a good time. You'll have until September 15th to go and make sure to vote in our live poll all morning long. We'll be sharing those results with you. About 100% of you are saying animals this morning. It's still very early. I don't know how many people of you have weighed in, but we'd love to hear what you have to say. Jen, do you have a favorite? Oh, I love the fair food. It's my one time a year where I just go nuts and say, you know what? All in moderation. Today is my day love it. and I can enjoy all of it. Sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> are you going to go? Oh, I love the fair. Absolutely. I was just at the fair back in Walla Walla this past weekend, and I feel like I didn't get enough, so <laughs> okay. I have to. <laughs> How fun. Okay, me too. I think I might, might make an appearance. Absolutely. All right, Dana Marie, thank you so much. It is 5.08 now. Well, so they say you might want to hold off from using mouthwash before going to the gym. Weird, right? Well, it turns out mouthwash can lower the benefits of exercise. This is according to a new study by Free Radical Biology and Medicine. Doctors say it can actually lead to high blood pressure. They say it has to do with the chemicals absorbed in your mouth. They say it reduced blood pressure lowering effects by 60%. All right. Well, no need to debate who is the favorite child in the family. It turns out it might be the family pet. According to new research, one third of parents say their pet is their favorite child. Parents have even purchased a gift for their pet more recently than a gift for their child. That one's not hard to believe, right? No, not at they all. They never talk back at you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this might be one of the funniest things you hear today. According to a new study, squirrels go nuts for gossip. 
not your typical lunchtime gossip. However, experts say that critters eavesdrop on birds to find out if a dangerous predator is nearby. They also say that squirrels forget about 80% of the nuts that they hide. Did you know that? <laughs> So their uh, brain must be a little tiny. They have to they're, keep repeating all this gossip. I think they're a bit That's frantic. So yeah. the time. funny. They like hide something and then they <laughs> completely forget it. My favorite fun fact. Also, yeah, what a random fun fact for oh, you to it's actually incredible. know. It's a great one. What What's funnier than thinking about squirrels forgetting about 80% of the nuts? That <laughs> That's how we have trees. <laughs> Oh, and now Evan. they're gossipers. Or no, they're they <laughs> eavesdroppers. Yes. I'm kidding. Okay. All right, Evan, thank you for that <laughs> random bit of information for us on our Friday morning. Of course. 510 now. Well, right now, hurricanes are ranked category one to five, but should that number be expanded? Considering we've seen a number of very strong hurricanes in recent years. After the break, we connect the dots. And it's flashback Friday, the new legendary Riverfront Park U.S. Pavilion is reopening today. At 5.30, we look into how it's transformed over the years. Look at all this vintage footage. I Very love fun. it. We'll be right back.